I'm sad to report some bad news about Cuba. The government or the labor minister, Marta Elena Felito, Fito, sorry, said that a list of authorized activities that private companies are allowed to do has been expanded from 127 to more than 2,000. And this represents a mass privatization of the economy inside of Cuba. You know, the opposite of socialism, unless China does it. Now, you know, a minority of sectors would be reserved for the state. In other words, literally a minority of the economy would be state run. And that's usually an argument that dingus make. Oh, yeah, but most of the economy is run by the state. Well, they wouldn't even be able to play that one here. Now, obviously, Cuba has been hit pretty hard by the pandemic and U.S. sanctions reintroduced by the Trump administration have caused even more harm. Now, last year, its economy shrank by 11 percent, which is, if you understand uh, countries, 11 uh, percent of the economy is a very large number. It's worst decline in almost three decades. And they've been facing shortages of basic goods because of the United States blocking them from being able to obtain them. Now, I know what a lot of people are going to say. Now, there is a Cuban source for this as well. It's not simply a claim that the BBC made. There very clearly is an article to the grandma, which is the party organ newspaper, which essentially announces this exact same thing. So don't say this is just the BBC claiming this. There, there is uh, actually Cuban source for this. Now, here's the problem. Aside from the fact that they're literally doing the opposite of socialism while claiming to be a socialist country like a lot of countries like China and Vietnam, this isn't going to work. Is it going to be able to eventually make some kind of positive changes? No, oh, very probably. But you see, here's the problem. I know exactly what they're doing. They've seen a lot of unequal growth because of the blockades that have been there for God knows how many, what, what six decades now, something like that. This is going to essentially create a fifth column of capitalists in the country. You're going to make a lot of small capitalists who are all going to get together and do everything that they can to influence the government in order to make those changes. And don't say, yeah, but that doesn't really happen when very much, yes, it does. Ask Hungary when it happens. And that's happened in many other countries as well. This is a very, a very clear situation. And as a result of this, we're probably going to see the country, I, I think it could even get poorer. And the poorer it gets, the more social instability. And now you have a, a bourgeoisie, the majority of the economy now to back you up. You'd be looking at a color revolution in a couple of years. Now, if there isn't an actual revolutionary defense to this that puts a stop to it, you're probably going to look at um, a kind of regular shock treatment that these countries usually get when the United States sends the IMF to completely screw it over. This is going to be child prostitution, cartel, mafia, uh, uh, you know, hellhole shock therapy, you know, demanding to see an end to the sanctions, etc., and privatization. It'll be, in the long run, this will all end up being probably poorer than Haiti. Because that's, that's where this goes. I think I know what Cuba is trying to do here. Do here. They're trying to do the dangest reforms. But the problem is, that's not going to work. Cuba isn't China. It isn't a nuclear power. Okay, it's not something that has a tremendous ability to defend itself militarily and economically. Okay, that's kind of always been Cuba's problem. They're, they're not a powerhouse. And as a result of this, they're going to fall right to complete privatization. This is literally not even how this begins. This is like the second step towards doing this. So this isn't even the beginning of it. It's already begun. But see, the U.S. won't just let them do the dangest reforms and then leave them alone. They're right in the U.S.'s backyard. They won't stop. They won't just let them be another China. They're going to completely destroy them. And that's the point. 
they're not going to get a, they're not going to get away with, with just simply dangerous reforms. The U.S. government is going to force them to become a totally privatized economy because they're not going to leave an example of someone resisting that much, that close to the border, with that much of a vulnerability because they have such a large private sector. So I know they're trying to make things better by liberalizing the economy, you know, which is the the opposite of socialism. But it's not going to work. Because the United States is not going to let it work. This is going to lead to the destruction of Cuba. And don't give me this, oh, well, they've done it this long so far, so therefore they'll be okay, which is, you know, I hate to use the meme, but literally not an argument. I mean, this is, this is literally how these things are destroyed. I think we start have to f- start facing the question now that Cuba is no longer a socialist country. If privatizing the majority of your economy doesn't constitute rejecting socialism, then, then literally nothing does. When you have market forces, when you have capitalists, you have capitalism. And you can't even hide behind, oh, the majority of the country is, of the economy is, you know, state-owned. The majority of it will not be state-owned. It will be privately owned. So I'm sorry, we're looking at this is the end of socialism in Cuba. And I know people aren't going to want to hear this and people are going to angrily react and get angry and denounce the video and, and all kinds of childish responses. But I think it's time we took a hard look at the situation. Take a look at what's being, at what's, at what's really happening and do some concrete analysis and not just angrily react to something that we don't want to hear. Thank you for watching. If you like this program, then please head over to my Patreon page and set up a monthly donation. It's your donations that keep this program running. Also, if you would like, please rate, comment, subscribe, and share in various social media.